Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and today I'm going to talk about Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This film has been written about so much for, you know, not doing well and not being as good. It kind of loses sight of it, but I'm also not going to say this is necessarily like a good movie in terms of actual movies and storytelling and stuff. I think I think this movie works mostly like uh, Conan the Destroyer did to Conan the Barbarian, where when I was like seven or eight, I wasn't allowed to see Conan the Barbarian, but I was allowed to see Conan the Destroyer. And I loved the Conan the Destroyer when I was that age. And if you're seven or eight, and I don't know if you're allowed to watch Shazam or not, it's, it is, there are some elements that are a little uh, really hit. And I know there's some people who didn't want to take their kids for reasons that I actually, uh, the few people who talk to me about it actually support them not seeing it. If this was just you were a kid who wanted to see, see a fun superhero movie, it's much better than like Quantumania or Thor Love and Thunder. But I think the real thing is, and the real thing that hurts, is the original, or first Shazam, was sort of about a character. The character of Billy Batson. It was sort of a superhero version of Big. And that's that's like a cool idea. And it said a lot about his character and going into who he was. I think what this suffers from is something that the Iron Man movie suffered from. Especially in the second one. Where it sort of doesn't know where to go after it accomplishes everything it does in the first one. And I think we would all like this to be like Spider-Man 2, where he continues to work on himself, continues to deal with the pressures of life and being a foster kid and living in this foster home and dealing with Shazam powers and everything like that. And it sort of does, but then it just really quickly gets into the, you know, Fury of the God stuff with Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu and uh, Rachel Ziegler. And it doesn't really work as well um, because there's a lot of kind of like half-eaten ideas that they mush together to make a full meal. And it's like, there's a lot on my plate here, but I am confused what the fuck this is. And I often felt like that while watching this movie where I do think there's enough good ideas where if you're a kid, you're going to have a good time and you might get pieces of those or your imagination will make a piece of that look much better than it actually is. But when you're actually watching it, you're sitting there and going like, why did we leave? Like his friend's powers, it feels like his friend's more, to Freddy is more developed. It feels like I'm not getting enough with the other kids. It just feels like a standard superhero plot without all the awe and wonder. Like none of the kids are like surprised by anything. And there's no like, oh my God, I can do this sort of wonderment that was so much fun about the first one. And there's no kind of comment on, oh, we've grown up. It's just sort of like, oh, we're in a superhero. This is a superhero. We just do the, we're doing the fight now. We're all big. We fly. You get it. And not in the Marvel way where they say that. They just like get so, they're just like, we're here. We're in it. Let's go. And that um, stinks, frankly. It's like, what, what movie am I watching right now? I'm like, I feel like I had this cute little Shazam movie that I was really into. And uh, this is sort of, it's like, you know, sequel that probably would have been made in the 80s or 90s that most people kind of like, you know, the studio made them put out in a year or something. And, you know, they've had COVID and all this time. And this is sort of what we get. This is about Billy Batson now has an entire team of a whole Shazam family, I guess. They're sort of working out in Billy since year about aging out of the foster system and trying to keep everyone together. All at the same time, uh, Hesba and Calypso, played by uh, Helen Mirren and um, Lucy Liu, are coming to uh, get the staff that Billy broke into two last time. And it opened up all the realms, and they're here to take the power that was her father Odin's, or I think, something like that, and get that back and like suck away their powers. And um, then they put a big bubble over Philadelphia and monsters attack and stuff. It really does feel like this is just like, we're doing this, we're super villains, you get your super villain of the week. But this feels like almost like just another ordinary Shazam adventure. But I think that kind of like, it almost feels like the plot of this is just not good, good enough to follow to its predecessor. Now, if this was, and I'm finding this with some franchise things and another one that review will come out soon where it's like, I, I sort of like this movie, but as a franchise entry, I'm like whatever about it um unlike creed 3 which i think works very well as a franchise entry these this one it it does feel like sort of like the flashbang sequel where they're like we didn't have enough time to figure all this stuff out we were rushing and it's like but you weren't it's just like 
a badly made sort of movie. You know, it's like writing wise, this movie just really doesn't work. And even though it has like a bunch of these, you know, cute foster kids doing all this cool superhero stuff, and I thought that really worked and they have good performance. I mean, Zachary Levi, I don't think I really like him as a person whatsoever, but he's very good at playing, you know, a child who's become an adult. Um, it's sort of fun watching Helen Mirren and Lucy Liu. I don't think they ham it up as much as they could. Even seeing Adam Brody, uh, Rachel Ziegler, I saw her in West Side Story and this within a few days of each other. And uh, the difference in performance is remarkable. I don't think this movie gave her as much to do. It has such a charm to it. I sort of want it to be better than it is. And it's just not, I don't think there's anything you can really do to fight that I sort of want to believe in it more. And I, I do think people are getting a little too extreme with how bad it is because it's essentially a film made for families. And it's probably like if you, your kids were too scared by the first Shazam or there's something inappropriate in the first Shazam for you or something. I think this one's probably will go down easier. So if they're like really want to see one of these movies, I would, you know, you could probably show them this much like Conan the Destroyer. And I'm sure like seven year old boys will love this movie. And in a sense, that is what it's sort of made for. And so part of me does think like maybe this movie sort of succeeded. But the other part of me is like, yeah, but the writing was like, what the fuck was that? Honestly, I think that sort of ruins this movie's chance because the first one was very well written and did have a point to it. Did have a, was saying something about it. Billy Batson as a character. But the first thing is I don't think these ideas really work, but the the second thing is that we have so many superhero movies and it's like the first one felt like such a breath of fresh air and so different and was having fun with it, especially with DC. And this one it's like, we have so many, like do I need a over bloated sequel? It just, you know, feels like it's going into beats just because it's supposed to. That feels exceptionally kind of boring. It does it better than most of those. Like, I, I kind of remember stuff in the end parts. I, you know, there's something with, like, a wooden dragon and a pen that writes down stuff, and that's a good gag. And, like, there are parts I actually really like, but I just kind of can't get past, like, its ineptitude of really telling a story and saying something. It's like they're taking away these people's powers. Like, you know, it kind of feels like they talk more about Freddy losing his powers, but what would it mean for Billy Batson, much like in Spider-Man 2, and even Superman 2, for fuck's sake. And like, I don't, it didn't bother me or I don't care if something's connected to a universe. I just want a good movie. Like whatever, honestly, with that stuff. Um, I, I don't know if that's why I bombed. I think the general public doesn't fully know a lot of them. So I don't know how much it would really affect their opinions on things or how they would view this movie. Look, if you're coming to a Shazam movie, this is what you get. But it's almost like, I feel like I don't have as much to talk about more because there's just not enough there. It's like there should be more there. There should be more after the first one. There should be so much more to talk about with this. This should be a worthy kind of follow-up. We should be talking about like Billy Batson as he becomes a man. Like how does he feel about being a superhero? Like how he's going to juggle a job? Like that idea of like you're on the precipice of adulthood and what are you going to do is an interesting idea. But they don't really explore that so much they're just like you know how everyone's leaving him and him becoming a superhero leader and things like that but like it's not doesn't even work metaphorically it just i i'm kind of disappointed to be honest like you know in this one uh but i think as a shazam sequel for the kids like this works very well and maybe you know i'm not trying to demote it or say like oh it's for the kids whatever but i do think there's a seven year old and eight year old who will have a good time with this movie and it works very well for that if you want a fun family film it absolutely brings that it's just like you know just don't concentrate on the story so much and uh you know you'll do great or you know for little kids who can like get through some of this and just ignore its flaws sure but those flaws are kind of egregious and especially when comparing it to the first film i think in some ways context works for and against this film for this film would be that the rest of the dc stuff that's leading up to this is absolute fucking garbage and also dark and like edgy and all that stuff so it like very much sticks out these two films the other thing is the first Shazam movie was really great and I think surprised a lot of people who don't normally even like superhero movies and uh, they really pulled off something special and you know seeing this be the follow-up is unequivocally a disappointment. Uh, I don't know if there's so much a fury of gods in this it just feels like almost when you're watching it the apathetic feeling washes over you and even if you are having a good time 
you're just sort of, you know, sitting there enjoying it, almost knowing that, you know, you'll have to be like, oh, right, they made a sequel to Shazam, didn't they? I think this will forever live in the shadow of a bunch of other stuff, uh, which is unfortunate because I think we all were kind of hoping that wouldn't be the case. But I think, uh, you know, it's not so much the cinematic universe ending that hurts it. It's ultimately its own lack of really trying to say anything to make you even aware that it's in the shadows of something else in the first place. Mm-hmm.